When I was growing up, my grandma used to tell me that I should always make sure I had something to do. One should never hang around having nothing to do and just killing time, were her exact words. So, that is what I did. I always made sure I had something to do. I became a doer with a capital D. I made actions my purpose and passion. I was curious, creative, and doing almost everything that came to mind. Almost everything. Thank God the education system did, didn't have all these diagnoses back then for the hyperactive kids. <laughs> I became an actress and loved working in the creative field that acting is, and it became my purpose and passion. And when theater closed during the summer and actors took their summer vacation, I changed outfits and became a stewardess. Remembering my grandmother's words, always having something to do. Well, that was last century. This century, I became a very responsible mother of two. Took my master's degree in business and I specialized in innovation and entrepreneurship. Something that wasn't very well, thank you very much. <laughs> Going behind my back. That's this century. We're having a spin. Oh my gosh, that's me. No, no, put it back, boy. Love having man behind my back. So, should I start again or? Well, this century, I became a very responsible mother of two. I took my master's degree in business and I specialized in innovation and entrepreneurship. Something that wasn't considered very practical at the time in Iceland. because Iceland was on its way to create a very prospective banking industry. Funny enough, the university study itself somehow gave me a secure feeling, feeling about knowing all these business, business models, business methods, which gave me tools to use in my new business career. But there was something missing. My purpose and my passion was missing somehow. So, after the economic challenges in 2008, the crisis, as some call it, or after the prospective Icelandic banking industry took its U-turn, and many of us lost their jobs, I sat down one evening and asked myself, Ingibjörg Greta, what is your purpose? What does your passion tell you this time? And with the everything to gain, nothing to lose attitude, and adding purpose and passion to the responsible formula, my choice was clear. It was creativity with a business twist. So, I went from the secure, well-paid job to my passion. The secure one and the passion. And just to explain the passion bit a bit more, after I was released from my well-paid and secure job, my girlfriends decided to go to Mexico and stay at this beautiful hotel that one of us, who is an architect, designed. And that trip was a perfect excuse for, to clear my mind, sit at the beach, take yoga classes, lay in the sun, relax on the balcony, and let my mind and heart find, lead the way in following my passion, responsibility. And it led me to fashion. Wow, it even rhymed, fashion. Passion, passion, fashion, ooh. So, my fashionable passion, with the business twist, then led me to the House of Ideas, which the Icelandic Academy of Arts and the Reykjavik University started after the economic challenges to act upon the situation and to do something creative together. It was an incubator center where art, design, technology, and business were joined in experiments, entrepreneurship, and creativity. 
And being a doer, with a capital D, I was soon offered the managing position in that creative atmosphere, and I grabbed the opportunity. As I knew, it, I would gain so much from it, and gosh, was I right about that. The House of Idea was about working on the entrepreneur's idea. We developed a strategy which made the idea the center of the attention and gave the entrepreneurs the freedom to focus on their passion and purpose. We asked them to work and experiment with their idea before they started to find out how much money they could make. The creative process and the freedom that goes with it is what we couldn't emphasize enough. We offered an atmosphere where the experimental process was as natural as any other process and time well spent. And we strove to mix the creative industry with science, technology, and the business sector. The rent was low, but we insisted our entrepreneurs to give us an idea on where they wanted to be in the next three, six, and nine months before entering our community, so we understood better how we could work together and we could help each other. We focused on the tools of creativity and created our own vocabulary for the making of success as we believed you need to work on your idea with different tools and process before taking it to the next level. Other important tools like business plan, marketing plan and all that is what is needed later in the process, but we focused on working with the grassroots on the whole process where nothing was impossible and everything was in the picture. The official Toolkit included mistakes, courage, perseverance, good intention, flexibility, and last but not least, a good humor. I felt so excited going to work every day. Can't believe it. And, and not only because of the attitude, attitude that we welcomed every idea, but mostly because my passion and purpose was back. And I was being a part of a change in the economy where design was an equal, natural part of the formula where design process and business process became one. There I learned that design touches almost every aspect of our lives, something without us even realizing it. The best part? I was being changed by design. This time, design in art and business. The House of Idea was open for two years. And we had 60 startups that created 160 jobs. We had 30,000 guests coming to our events, workshops, etc., which equal to almost one tenth of the Icelandic population as a whole. Imagine the result. The House of Idea was about helping startups, giving them time, environment, community, and network to grow and explore. It was a melting pot both for the universities open its doors and offer it an interactive conversation with entrepreneurs with the grassroots. It was, and still is, the best incubator center innovation project in Iceland. It was a huge success. And even though I felt a bit sad when it closed last March, I was a bit happy in a way as I was prepared for marketing the Icelandic fashion designers, having my passion Fashion. I didn't go to Mexico this time. I didn't have to. I simply opened up for my passion in fashion, established my company, named it Reykjavik Runway, and guess what? I made a to-do list. The fashion industry is a challenging industry. It's a young industry in Iceland, which also means that I can influence it with my passion. I have something to say. I have a purpose and I love it. I admire fashion designers because they are in the business because of their, fashion, of their passion for it and nothing else. My way of entering into the fashion industry was having a fashion competition for the spring-summer collection for 2012.
The competition was in cooperation with the Icelandic Fashion Council, as it is very important to me to be part of the fashion community and work from the inside out. The grand finale was in August, and every step of the way, we were concerned with its purpose and quality, and we only added sponsor that could fit that profile. Mercedes-Benz in Iceland accepted to be the main sponsor, and we added them to our logo and designed a cooperation that we both enjoyed very much, and named the competition Mercedes-Benz Reykjavik Runway Spring-Summer 2012. This project, this competition, was done with passion and purpose. We never compromise for anything else and anything less. And we did it from the fashion design point of view. And because of that, it simply worked. We, and we did more. We asked our first lady of Iceland, Ms. Dorit Musayev, to be the patron of the competition, which she accepted and came to present the awards. We went to New York for the Fashion Week and introduced a group of designers in a special showroom. We invited buyers, people from the press, bloggers and others from the fashion industry. We had a great time, of course, but most importantly, we started our relationship with buyers and landed a couple of sales. This was my third time in the Fashion Week, introducing designers, but by the far the best one in many ways. And again, our patron, Ms. Dorit Musayev, joined us. Her being there and supporting the designer was something beyond my wildest dreams, which taught me that you should always aim high, put your dreams out there, and be prepared for them to come true. I believe in marketing the fashion designers through various events, and I am planning those events, getting prepared for the year to come, 2012. That means I sure will have something to do. In a success design business process, the user is the most important factor. In my case, I have two users, the fashion designer on one hand and the fashion consumer on the other. It is therefore very important to work from the inside out in cooperation with the fashion industry, which is Reykjavik Runway in a nutshell. We are working on a marketing strategy where art design and limited edition plays the main part, as well as emotional design. Emotion and experience are trends that should and will be increasingly more visual in the marketing toolbox in the nearest future, Service and concept design needs also to be taken into consideration as it includes communication and behavior of the fashion consumer. Fashion design and the fashion business is not the easiest profession, I admit, I could have chosen. But it's my passion and my purpose, and I couldn't be happier with my choice. It took me a while to prepare for my dreams to come true, but it was worth every step of the way, every lessons learned, and the most important one, change by design.